When you look for yourself online, what do you look like? How are you going to get found by people who are searching for your services? That's right. And what if you don't like what you find when you search for yourself? What do you do? Hi, I'm Charlie Seymour, Jr. And I'm Dr. Mark Koss. And thanks for coming to this question and answer video. But make sure you stay tuned to the end because we have a very special offer for you that you want to check out. We certainly do. So go ahead and watch. We'll see you in the end. What do you do if there is negative content? Are you able to post rebuttals and responses to negative reviews or ratings? And this can get tricky. We have a prime example that we wrote about in one of our blogs as well. What can you do about negative content? Is that something you really want to avoid? Well, it's in, in the grand scheme of things, of course, we'd like to avoid negative content. We'd like to think that you know, we provide such excellent Everybody service. Everybody loves me. That's right. But odds are that you will run across an unhappy customer, whether it's legitimate or not, whether it's your issue or their issue, there will become a time where there's conflict. Um, that's not something to fear, however. I mean, the fact is, uh, it, it's been argued that a negative review is a bigger opportunity for you to get positive uh, you know, connection to people than a positive one. Uh, if someone posts something negative, and it's your chance to publicly show how you handle that. Are you going to be professional? We have a, a blog post about someone who was very unpro unprofessional in the way that they responded to an unhappy customer, and they got into an argument online. Well, that made them look very, very unprofessional and very bad. So that's Mud not slinging what kind of. Exactly. So yeah. you, you, you're going to get upset when you read that negative comment, and that's when you need to count to ten, you know, be thoughtful, not be impulsive, and say, okay, so what might be a valid point that this person is making and how should I address that publicly to show that I listen, I hear what people are saying. I don't have to agree, I can say I hear what you're saying, I hear your point of view and here is what I'm going to say in response. I, I'm going to create a rebuttal or I'm going to provide some customer service or I'm going to right the wrong whether it's you know accurate or not. But in addition, you've been hopefully, if you've been doing what we advocate doing, you've been cultivating positive reviews and, and that one negative in an ocean of positive also speaks volumes right. that, and makes it much more obvious that it's really more about that person than you as a professional. But if that negative is the first thing that showed up, well, don't pull the covers over your head and, and think the world is over. Get on there, respond to it, engage in it. So in short, the most dangerous thing that can happen to you is a negative comment that you don't know about. Because if you don't know about it, it sits there and it festers essentially. It's like it's like an infection. So you want to get on it. You want that monitoring system to alert you and say, "Whoops, I got to get on there and respond to that. I got to spend a little more time putting in place the system we talk about to encourage my best clients to be out there putting reviews up for me and good ratings for me." And one of the reasons you need a system to get people to help you putting those positive reviews out there for you is that people when they're negative, and it is human nature that people seem to want to vent when they're negative, but they're really specific. You know, that lousy so-and-so, he did this, this, and this. When often, if something nice about you is being said, oh, he was such a great guy, oh, he's, she's terrific, and they don't go into all the other reasons because it's not really clear in their minds what positives they need to be saying about you. So even that distinction is something we need to know about. So. Now, I want to highlight one other thing about this Please. question, though, because it, it asks, can, are you able to post rebuttals and responses? Are but, you able to? Well, and that, that's also a bit of a tricky yeah. I issue, because sometimes the answer is yes and sometimes no, in the sense that some websites are very poorly designed, and they don't have a mechanism for you to go in. There's not a customer service place where you can do that. So what do you do there? Well, there's nothing stopping you, however, from creating your own content around that and, and picking up on it, rather than hiding from that negative. Well, what if you actually took that negative review and wrote a blog post on your website about it and say, well, you know, this is an unfortunate incident, this is an unhappy person, here's what they said, and here's what I'm going to do about it. Here's how I'm going to be professional about it, here's how I'm going to learn from this, uh, maybe there's something that I can do better, even though I don't necessarily agree with what this person is saying. So there is always a way to respond and rebut. You may not be able to do it on that particular site, though, so don't let that stop you. Get creative. Uh, don't leave things sitting there unresponded to. Find a way to respond to it. Find a way to do that public customer service because you'll get a ton of mileage out of it. 
Wow, you were pretty good in that, Dr. Mark. You weren't too shabby yourself. Well, thanks very much. And that was one of 25 questions and answers that we have for you. That's right. We spent a whole lot of time. We really want you to get found online. So we went through 25 of these. This was just a sample, and we want to give it all to you. Well, where can they come and get all that information? Well, getfound101.com is the place to go. Sounds like a smart idea. So join us over there, getfound101.com, and get all 25 of these, getfound101.com. Thank you.